Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco. And I'm Lynn Langett. And we're here to talk about how to do unit testing of ASP.NET pages with the Approval Test Library. If you're not already familiar with the Approval Test Library, you might want to pause and check out some of the other videos on this subject. And where would people find those? Always, approvaltest.com. So first, um, let's take a look at what our project is and how, how we're going to use it here. So like most things, uh, I have an ASP.NET website here. I have a page. I can, of course, go here and view my page in a browser. Uh, now it takes input values, so it's going to fail on first load. So I'm going to set that up with the known value. And you can see here, it's just rendering a simple invoice. So on this invoice, um, this is an HTML page, and mm -hmm. it's calling out to a database? Yes, indeed. It's calling out to a local database that's sitting here with a very simple schema that we're going to be using. OK, great. Yeah. So before we talk about how to do this properly with approval tests, let's talk a little bit about how web pages are tested in general. Now, when I tested web pages, I used like a web stress test tool, and it just kind of did a click through of what the users did. This is the same as that, or different than that? Well, we're going to talk about that method at first, right? Not as a stress tool, but just as a unit testing tool. For, oh, okay. Not not to test that your server can handle the load, but that it's returning the right results. Okay, so like that would be done typically with asserts or something, but I never really did that when I was a web designer. So this is where a lot of times traditional asserts sort of break down, and this is why people use other testing frameworks, stuff like Selenium. Oh, I've heard of that, yeah. And so just so we can go through what the methodology is, you have your unit test running here in its own little virtual machine package. And it's going to go out through the front door of the web server, come into the ASP.NET page, which is going to load off of the database, and then come back and you're going to do your verification of the whole page that comes back. And you'll use Selenium if you want to do just pieces or parts of it. Okay. And so let's look at how that would be done using approval tests, because you can definitely do that sort of thing. Okay. So here uh, in my approval test, I'm going to say approvals.approve a URL. And I'm just going to go and steal this URL directly from the page. And approvals.approve is replacing an assert, but it's a, it's a more powerful type of an assert here, as we're going to see. Exactly. It's going to assert against the entire page. So let's give this a run. Great. You'll see right now it comes up in a different part, which is not very useful. I can't tell if this is right or not. So this comes up in a diff reporter because of that line in the configuration there where you're saying use reporter diff reporter. Yeah, which is usually quite helpful, but in this case, isn't really allowing me to see if I got the right thing. Yeah, because you're just looking at the source HTML. And I'm not good at reading the HTML. And so I'm going to use a file launch reporter instead, which is going to do the exact same thing, but this time instead of pulling out the files in a diff reporter, it's going to take the failing file and open it for me in the default for that file type, which for an HTML file, of course, is going to be my web browser. Now this I can understand and see, indeed is what I want. So now all I have to do is approve it. Many different ways to do that, but right now I'm going to look at the test details and copy the command line so that I can just move the receive file to the approve file. And again, if you're kind of new to this approval library, this is something you wrote to facilitate um, testing, and it's an open source library that you use kind of in addition to or instead of asserts. In addition to your current framework, and here I'm using MS test, but instead of this cert, yeah. So now I've said this is the this is the result that I want. Mm -hmm. I can go back here, I can run it, and see that it will pass. But the problem with these tests are even though this is passing, it's very, very unstable. If something really simple changes, for example, if I was to go through the data taste and change the order number, ooh, control Z. The order number, not yeah, the order yeah, date. Yeah, not the date. Yeah. Although the date would most definitely do it too. You can see that now when I run the test, should fail, right? Should fail. Yeah. Uh, now, the problem again comes from now it's going to fail, but it's going to be hard to figure out what failed because I have it in the file launcher view, which lets me sort of see the end result. 
and it's hard to see this and figure out what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to switch the way that I'm viewing this failure to a diff reporter. And I find with ASP.NET pages that I'm switching my view of failure quite a lot. Oh, I see. And then you can see the specific line that's changed. That makes sense. So these reporters are different ways of comparing the received and the approved files. Exactly. And okay. in fact, you can see here there's this other hash of the data that's changing too, mm -hmm. which really makes it very hard to make sure that you have exactly the right state that's being used. So this is the problem with this. Of course, there's also the problem of if you need to test setting up stuff, you need to make sure that all your preconditions are set up. You're actually going against the database. These tests are much slower. All of these become real problems. Mm -hmm. right? And so we're going to talk about how we change that to avoid all of those problems. Because when you have tests that are take a long time to run, you tend not to want to run them really frequently because exactly. it just slows you down. And tests that have a lot of setup, like mm -hmm. a database, mm -hmm. you tend to also not want to write or run. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, on top of all of that, maintenance becomes quite a big deal. So what we're going to do in this new methodology is we're basically going to go into the front door but with a secret handshake that says, hey, even though I'm coming through the front door, I want to run the, my test part of this method. Right? So instead, because of the secret handshake on the page load, instead of going out and doing the thing it normally does to load up the data, we are going to divert to this test method. So is this kind of like a mock? It's, it's like a mock of the functionality. Right? And of course, it will also usually mock the data. Right? Yeah, so it's going to run a lot faster too, isn't it? A lot faster, a lot more stable, a lot easier to do. Cool. In fact, let's write it as if we were in the test and we could just nicely test ASP pages, which of course, you can't really. So in English, what I would want to do is, you know, create a fake invoice. And then I would want to load the invoice viewer with that invoice. And then of course I would want to verify the result. Right, so let's start with this first line, create the fake invoice. All right, so I'm gonna say var invoice equals a new invoice. And we need to set some of these things. So first the company name, well, my favorite company is always Acme. Uh, we're gonna need an order, Date. My favorite date, of course, is 1592 on March 14th, which is the ultimate pie day. You like pie, don't you? Everyone likes pie. <laughs> and then <laughs> we're going to need an order number. Uh, and let's just do one, two, three for that. All right. Well, this gets us a lot of the way towards a fake order, except for we need a couple line items on here, too. So I'm going to add a line item of a candy bar at uh, 75 cents. Sugar seems to be a theme with you. Sugar and caffeine, of course. <laughs> so we're going to also need a soda. And a rather big one, we'll put that in at a buck 25. But only one of those. All right, so this would be create my fake invoice. Now I have to load the invoice with this result, which is basically going to be on the page. Uh, invoice is going to equal invoice. But this gets to the whole problem, right? I cannot access the page because, as we talked about before, it's in a separate machine, or not a separate machine, but a separate machine space yeah. than I'm running my unit tests in. And so what I'm going to have to do is take this part of the method and move it over to my ASP page. So here, now the page, of course, is the page I'm in, so this just becomes a this. Right? And this is really my test method. Now let's go back to my test. Right? You can see this part is now occurring at the thing. So now I just have to verify the result, which of course is an approve. But now I need that secret handshake, which is going to be to call the message, test simple invoice. 
Okay, I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're doing here. Normally on an ASPX or an ASP.NET page, you have a page load method. Yes. So how are you getting around that page load method? Ah, uh, well, I haven't actually done that yet. Okay, so you have a little bit more coding to do I have do one here. little more line here at the page point. I need to get around this part. Okay. So what I'm going to say is if, and this is ASP help or testing utilities. And uh, this is part of your library. This is part of the library. Okay. Divert the test call for this page. Okay. So if I need to divert it, then just return. It will handle all the other calls and everything like that. All right, so this is my diverter line. It's always the same And line. then you're passing the, scroll down to the method name there. You're passing the method name as part of the URL. Exactly, that okay. tells me to divert. So you could divert to any method because that's in the method name. Yes. I mean, the Although, first string, basically. It has to start with the word test or the diverter will not do it. And it okay. doesn't, that's for security reasons. Okay. All right, so now that I have this set up, I can run this. And the diff reporter alone will sort of show you here, hey, I'm using my new thing, but it's still a little bit hard to see. So you're going to switch to the other reporter now, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. Because I really want to make sure that this is rendering correctly. Now, if I have some kind of diff tool that I like, um, how does that work with approval tests? If so there's reporters for Tortoise, there's reporters for WinMerge, there's reporters for Beyond Compare. And it's very, very simple to write your own compare. It's, it's open about source. five lines of code. It's open source, right? So, yeah. Okay. So here you can see, here it is using the new thing. Here's our Pi Day. Uh, everything <laughs> is working good. So I'm going to approve those this page again. You're just doing a rename there from the receive. I'm taking the receive file and moving it over to the approve file. Just rename, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. And now you can see that this will work. And this is working without hitting the database. In fact, I can prove that by going and stopping the database completely. Because you're diverting around exactly. to that mock data. Going to the mock data. Yeah. And the test is coming back faster, too. Of course, because yeah. it doesn't have to go and do all that. Yeah, it's coming back almost instantaneously here. Now, the one thing that I don't like about this is that I'm using the straight string. Mm -hmm. That really messes up with my refactoring tools and, and keeping track of all that stuff. And so what I usually do here is instead of passing this in, I will say new invoice view. Mm-hmm dot and then the t thing that I want, simple test on. Now I'm not actually calling the method itself. I'm passing a delegate to the method. And instead of saying approve URL, I'm going to say approve ASP page and pass it the delegate. And it will figure out what that URL is for me. And of course this is tight, safe, and I don't have to remember all this stuff and it works with my refactoring tools. Yeah. And if we run it, we'll see that we still get the passing test. So one quick review. We go into our unit test, we come out with the secret handshake that goes in through the web server. Instead of doing what it normally does, goes to the method that we called, so we can have multiple test methods to test multiple scenarios for a single page, and then renders the entire page back to the unit test. Cool, and if people want to get this, what do they do? Just go to approvaltest.com, download the latest version. It's all open for source, free as in freedom, free as in beer. I'm Llewellyn Falco. And I'm Lynn Langett. And, and we, we approve, approve this, this demo. demo.